I hope everyone's doing well today. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. We are looking here at the position function. It's a piecewise function and a graph with regards to what you see over there at a request of a particular viewer. How can you examine these type of questions for your calculus one exam? That's what we're looking at here. The focus is the position function. Look right here at the graph from zero to 10 seconds. We have this function over here. You see two T square. Then from 10 to 20 seconds, we have this horizontal line, a function, 200. And then from 20 to 25 seconds, you see this minus 40t plus 1000. And you know, the time is over there. As you can see clearly time independent variable on the x axis position, the dependent variable on the y axis. This can be in meters. This here can be in seconds. But the piecewise function you see over there clearly depicts what you have over here. Now, when you're looking at these type of questions on an exam, remember this, when you're going from the position, you do its derivative, you'll end up at the velocity function, you do the derivative and you'll end up at the acceleration. The velocity is a first order derivative of a position function, acceleration is a second order derivative. When you're looking at a position function, if you do its derivative, that derivative you've determined, the slope of the tangent line will give you an indication of the velocity. Now you do the derivative once more, you're getting an indication of the acceleration. And that's exactly how you want to handle these type of questions. If you are given that as an exam, how do you start? Well, you look at the very first part, you have two T square. Your position function is equal to two T square. You do its derivative. You're doing the derivative of this. You're gonna get here a four T. You do the derivative of this again, you're gonna get here a four. This right here is meters. This here is meters per second. This is meters per second square. Now we're only examining this part right over here from zero to 10, we're looking at this. How would you examine it? How would you analyze it? Well, you know, based on these functions, you can now determine the position of the object at any time in that interval. At time zero seconds, you just put it in here, your object has not moved, it's at rest position. And then you can say at time at seven seconds, you put it right over here, two times 49, that's 98 meters, and you get the idea. As the time increases from zero to 10 seconds, your object moves and it moves in a parabolic manner away from its resting position. That's all about all the analysis you need to do for that position aspect. Now, what about the velocity? You look right here at the velocity function. At time zero, the object was not moving. You have a velocity here of zero. You just put these seconds right here into this. At time, let's say six seconds, what do you have? Four times six, the object is 24 meters per second. But look, you have a parabolic function. If you do its derivative, you're getting a linear function which has a slope factor of four. What will that tell you? It will tell you that you'll have a increase in velocity at a specific rate. What's that rate? And the rate will be your slope. At time zero, you have a velocity of zero, but at time one, you'll have a four. At time two, you'll have an eight. And then you know you're going by four, zero, four, eight, 12, then you have 16, then you have at the very end of this time interval, 40 meters per second. And why do you have it? Because the derivative of this parabolic function is a linear line, diagonal line. The slope will be constant along this line. And that's why you're seeing here a constant rate of that slope. But when you do the derivative of this line, a diagonal line, you're getting horizontal line. Now, what does that tell you? At each second of this interval, the acceleration is constant. The acceleration is four meters per second. At any point in the interval, let's say at five seconds or at seven seconds, the acceleration will always be four meters per second square. And you know there's acceleration because based on the time, as you're seeing based on the time, the velocity is changing. If velocity changes over a period of time, you must have acceleration. Except in this instance, you have a constant acceleration because from a parabolic to a linear to horizontal line, a horizontal line indicates a slope of zero. There's no change in that slope. Therefore, the acceleration factor must be the same over that entire interval. So everything has been analyzed from zero to 10. Now look at it in this interval right here. When you're looking from 10 to 20, we have a position function. The position function is 200, but you have a constant here. You do the derivative of this, you're getting here a zero. You do the derivative of it again, you're getting a zero. And why is that the case? Because a horizontal line indicates a slope of zero. Any tangent line you draw on it at any point in this interval will also have a slope of zero. There's absolutely no change in position. Therefore, there is no change in velocity. If velocity is not changing, there's no acceleration. Think about it. From 10 to 20 seconds, your object is at rest but it's at rest 200 meters away from its resting position. That's how you would analyze this time interval. Your object was 200 meters away from an initial rest position, but for those 10 seconds, it stayed at rest at that particular point. 
because the object was not moving you don't have these so that analysis is complete and then we'll now look at this very last part for this interval it's not much of a difficult analysis at all just do minus 40 t plus 1000 that's what you have as your position function you do the derivative of this you're getting here your velocity which is minus 40 you do the derivative of that it's a constant but you get a zero look you're going from a linear line which is diagonal you're doing its derivative you're getting horizontal line you do the derivative of that you get a zero but you can easily do the analysis of the position, the velocity and acceleration of this object for this five second interval and it's not hard. If you want to determine the position of the object in that interval, you can do like 21 seconds. It falls right in here and put that in. 40 minus times 21 plus 1000. It tells you your object is 160 meters away from rest position. It went the furthest away, 200 meters, but now it's 160 meters away. What does this tell you? As you're going from 20 to 25 seconds, your object, which is 200 meters away from the rest position, is slowly coming back to the original rest position. You don't need to do any more analysis of the position. You know, as you put the different seconds of this interval, you'll see that these meters will get closer and closer to zero until you arrive at your rest position. But what about the velocity? The velocity, there's nothing you can do in terms of analysis at any time in that interval any pick any time you'll always have a constant velocity here of minus 40 meters per second but what does this minus mean your object here in terms of vector is now pointing in the opposite direction in this initial phase the object is moving away you have a vector here in terms of velocity it's positive here the object is moving back towards the rest position in terms of vector it's coming back to the original position it's moving at a good velocity but it's flowing in the opposite direction hence the minus but in all the seconds of this interval your velocity is constant it's minus 40 meters per second because the velocity is constant and it's not changing with time the acceleration at any time of this interval will always be zero because there is no acceleration velocity never changed in this time interval you're seeing the position is changing at a steady rate velocity is constant and acceleration is non-existent in this interval you're seeing the object did not move position was constant 200 meters away from the rest position but there was no velocity no acceleration and in this interval you notice that the object was in a parabolic manner moving away from the rest position ever so further away from that rest position and you saw what the velocity was it became a linear function having a constant slope the velocity was changing in each second of that interval because velocity was changing you had an acceleration but that acceleration was a horizontal function which meant that you have a constant acceleration in all the seconds of that interval so you can see how everything plays about when you have these type of questions examine what your position function is do its derivative and you get your velocity do the derivative you get your acceleration based on the type of functions you have then you can see what type of analysis is needed we are going from a parabolic to a linear to horizontal line. Here we have horizontal line, there are no derivatives. Here we have a linear diagonal line, you're going to a horizontal line, then to a constant in terms of a derivative. All of that makes sense in terms of what you saw here with regards to the outputs. Thank you, have a good day, bye.